before the healing service. I don't know how many chairs we had in there. It's probably, uh, probably, I don't know, 400 or so. I don't know. I don't know. Those members. Uh, it was a bunch. Uh, actually, it was more than that. I do know it was more than that. And so we were right down to the wire. Everybody was fixing to come in the door. They were lined up outside. And so we were, and then I said, don't let them in yet. And they were supposed to let them in. And so guy had to go, no, wait, hang on, just hang on. And the people thought, wait, you said 6.30. And it, but it was different because I went in and started at the very back and just went to every chair, started laying hands on it, every chair. Why? Because whatever I touch, as a human, I leave DNA. As, as a Christian, I leave DNA. God's divine nature attributes. And so when I leave, when I walk away, the Spirit of God is left there. That's how Paul ministered to people with what we call prayer claws. He wore them. He didn't pray over them. There's no word that he prayed. We, we shouldn't really call them prayer claws. But he gave out the claws, and if a person was sick, they got healed. And if they had a devil, they got free. Think about that. With cloth. Just a piece of cloth taken from his body. That's how that baby got healed. Why? Because I was holding it. It's not the cloth. I might have told you the story last year when I was here, but when my wife used to run the office and she would answer the calls and things, she had a lady <clears throat> uh, that wanted a prayer cloth. And we didn't know what for, but I was on a trip and my, my wife said, where's the prayer cloth? She called me, where's the prayer cloth? I don't know, that's where they should be. No, there's none there. I said, then I don't know. Maybe we don't have any. So my wife went to my closet, took a perfectly good shirt. <laughs> she didn't cut it in little pieces. She cut the sleeve off. The whole sleeve. Didn't cut it up. Took the whole sleeve, put it in an envelope, and mailed it. Didn't even know what it was for. Just knew somebody had requested a prayer cloth. When the lady got it, she was down in uh, Florida. When she got it, her, she took it out. And I don't know what she thought <laughs> when she pulled out a whole sleeve. <laughs> <clears throat> but she, here's the thing. My, my wife didn't know this. She didn't know anything about it. But then the lady wanted the cloth for her dad, whose arm was withered. And so when the lady got the, the sleeve, the prayer sleeve, <laughs> she, <laughs> she put it on his arm and pinned it to his T-shirt and told the, the workers there, leave it on him, don't take it off. And they look at her like, are you crazy? What, what are you doing? And, but she paid the bills, so they didn't take it off. So she went home. The next morning, she went over to visit her dad. When she walked in the door, he was in the, what they call the great room. It's a big open room. And when he saw her, wow. started waving at her. Now, now, this, now, this, I mean, all the nurses and all that, they just freaked out. They're like, what, what is, we know this man. This, what happened? And so they asked, they asked the lady, said, what was in that? sleeve and she said nothing but the arm of an anointed man of God <laughs> amen but now here's, here's the good part if you're born again there's no difference between us what I've got you've got yeah? the only thing the only difference would be I've had some experiences why did I have experiences? Because I'm special? No. My wife would tell you, he ain't special. <laughs> or she might say, yes, he's special. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. She's, she's said it both ways before, so I'm not sure. But what the reason I've had the experiences is because I got fed up being normal. Right. Yeah. I just got fed up. 
I didn't have a light from heaven. I didn't have any special thing happen to me in that sense. I got backed into a corner by some very straightforward preaching. And I decided I cannot continue the way I'm doing. I don't want to just preach about a God that heals. I said, I want to live that life. And that was 40 years ago. And so now I've been living that life. And I can tell you, I've just, you know, can I just be honest and transparent with you? Can I just open up here? Because I've seen some things. I can tell you, I ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. I know that for a fact. But, and I can, I can tell you now that we have entered into a new phase of ministry. That God is doing some things differently now. And he's having me do things differently now. But I can tell you this. I had to make the decision to step into what he has offered. And I made that decision. And very likely, it's going to cost me a lot. Right? I'm just talking about in the realm of ministry and that kind of stuff. Why? Because I'm, I don't want to be a professional minister. I just want to represent Jesus accurately. Amen. And so things are changing. Now, 